Ladies and gentlemen, and every other beautiful individual and entity, my name is Maximum Austin, and today uh, we're going to continue our little um, little uh, showcase of the oh geez um, of um, uh, this one. This isn't what it looks like. Um, we're going to continue our a little um, showcase of the Ice Climber series in this game uh, with. Uh, with uh, showcasing their stage excuse me we'll go ahead and turn off items uh the icicle mountain um stage uh which uh, i'm sure you know is a hoot a hoot and a holler so um we'll go ahead and select the ice climbers for this and uh who do i want to be who's a good uh, i guess we'll just have to be uh and eh, we'll be Peach. We'll be Mario. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and dial him down to like a three. And we'll go ahead and uh, showcase that stage. Here's the stage uh, select menu. Of course, I wasn't kidding. And uh, we have the Infinite Glacier, Icicle Mountain. And obviously, you can see the uh, mountain in the background there. And uh, let's, give her, let's give her a look. And yep, it is a scrolling stage, just like the original Ice Climber. You just fight. The uh, b boundary um, line uh, keeps shifting, and uh, yeah, this is the this is their this is the ice climbers playground. They uh, do stuff in it, and uh, we obviously killed Mario in a few seconds. Maybe giving a little bit of a insight into how um, their world, how it would have looked like um, if we had GameCube technology back in 19. <laughs> Uh, 1984, but uh, it doesn't it doesn't look too. The geometry do, looks a little bit different, but you have little you have little uh icicles, you have ice patches, ice stones, uh, platforms of wood, that sort of thing. No pterodactyls, no dinosaurs. Oddly enough, sometimes you do get an enemy that spawns. Obviously, in the adventure in the adventure mode, we showcase some uh some of the enemies from that um. From those from that series and sometimes like the goombas and the zelda creatures uh they do appear in like crates in the multiplayer mode so that's cool just something to something uh weird uh to pop out and obviously there are parts where it's going to speed up it's going to speed down it's going to and uh yeah there we go and obviously the ice climbers have a home turf advantage because a lot of the a lot of the surfaces are slippery, but uh, they uh, can traverse them just fine. Except when <laughs> how did I taunt? That's odd. I didn't even press the D-pad. Um, but uh, but yeah, this is their domain. And obviously, you can, as you see in the uh, opening, it's uh, pretty. They do this all the time. It actually says Infinite Glacier. Isn't that... That's a Wreck-It Ralph sort of existential crisis right there. It's, uh... It's, um... Like, you're destined to climb this mountain until... To reach the top, never... What a waiting for Godot situation there. Very existential, um, weirdness. And obviously, we'll showcase some of their, uh, victory animations. They're a couple. They're friends. They, they know how to get the job done. And I guess we'll go ahead and uh, we'll uh, have them face different Nintendo characters. We'll go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and showcase that stage again. And obviously, you have some some of the uh, stages are some of the stages breakable. So, but I but uh, obviously this isn't tournament legal. Um, this doesn't appear in competitive Smash play a whole lot. I don't really like to play this stage all that much. Sometimes, if you wanna, if you wanna troll your friends, but uh, this isn't one of my, this isn't necessarily one of my favorites. Uh, if I had to pick of the two, Ice Climber stage, I would have picked. Uh, I will pick the um, one in Brawl more than anything. That's fun, uh, but this isn't really my bag. But that's okay because some things, some things necessarily don't have to, you know. Come on, Link. Get out of there. I, li I like this move. And obviously, you can have the helicopter 
their way up the mountain, which I think is pretty cool. If I could helicopter myself to anywhere, <laughs> that'd be great. Oh, you know that cartoon, like Turbo Teen, where it was a teenager that could transform into a car? <laughs> Why wasn't there one about uh, somebody that could transform into a helicopter? That would have been awesome. This exists. No, the the car cartoon exists. I'm not kidding. And uh, as far as the ice climbers go, not a lot of not a whole lot of changes were made um, from them uh, from their appearance in uh, melee. They're down air. Uh, this little thing right here, this uh, propelled them downwards, but um, other than that, no, it's just, uh, it's just a little, little butt blunt attack. So, this little nifty little attack here, I'm trying to make sure uh, the microphone is picking up my voice, and it is. So let's send this, let's send this guy back to high rule, where he belongs. He's not giving up without a fight. There we go. Let's see if we get another animation. High five! Awesome. Fifth bump. And um, I guess we can do one more thing. Uh, what's another? What's another good NES title rep? I guess we can go ahead and um, do. I guess uh, they're fun. Uh, we'll have them face the main group. The Nintendo's. Literal, uh, 800 pound gorilla, uh, Donkey Kong, so yeah. In this final little, final little, uh, 3v3. Best 2 out of 3. Best 3 out of 5. Oh no. Where's it 4 out of 5? I don't know. I can't remember. No, it's 3 out of 5. This has actually been a fun little experience. We're rounding up. I should do someone else next year. Maybe like a showcase of Frozen in video games. Maybe uh, Sub-Zero. I can't... Maybe uh, Cole from Infamous, maybe? Do a playthrough of that. I know that... Um, I don't know when uh, Sucker Punch's next game, uh, Ghosts of Tsushima. Excuse me, I don't know the Japanese uh, term uh, in, that, in that title. But that would be awesome. You know, different seasons, maybe in summer, maybe comment like, it's hot, and do fire-based characters or something. But I like showcasing characters in video games. I think characters in video games matter. And just like in the way, maybe like in the way like Mickey Mouse matters, you know? Or like uh, Bugs Bunny does. They're still part, they're still, they still partake in stories, they partake in media, they part, they're artistic... They're artistic. They are uh, creations. They're uh, creations of uh, of our culture and of our expressions. So. Like Pac-Man was made. Um, you look at Pac-Man, and he's a he's a character of a video game centered around him that was created by a guy who just figured like, hey, can we do? Can we have something else instead of instead of like shooting in space? And just have something, anyone, like, make a simple concept out of a hobby a lot of people enjoy. Uh, eating. I enjoy to eat. And obviously with Toru Yutani there, the creator of Pac-Man, he was like, oh no! He was like, um, I wanted to make something for women, but yeah, that's, uh, okay, fine, but you know what, that's okay. Pac-Man, video games are for everyone, but, you know. And obviously, you don't have to be a woman to eat. You don't have to be a woman to like uh, cute characters. You don't have to be a woman to do anything. There we go. This final cute one I think we have. You know what? I'm done. We'll, we'll stop showcasing their victory animations for now. But they do have the one victory animation, I'm sure you know. So. Alright, I guess we'll go ahead and let me pick my favorite character in this game. We'll go ahead and pick um Samus. And we'll just go ahead and pick some uh, random guys. And Link. Hey there, Link. Or should I say, Stink? We'll go ahead and do, uh, we'll go ahead and do five for the CPU level. And, uh, we'll go ahead and showcase some. It's multiplayer madness. And we'll go ahead and do time because I think we'll do three minutes. 
we'll go back in and we'll do turn turn the items very high. And uh, we'll go ahead and do this. So yeah. Sounds like fun. Um, I guess we'll talk about anything that's brought up. I do like Samus in this game. I think she's cool. I think if I had a favorite Smash Brothers character, it would be her. I like, uh, she, she's good in most games. Uh, her and her power suit. And the, like, the Starship Troopers inspired alien science fiction Gundam power suit. And I think she's pretty good here. I like, I like her taunt. That was rude of you, Mr. Hero of Time. Mr. Legendary Hero. Shame on you. And obviously this stage gets bonkers when you add, like, obviously you can't die. <laughs> and with the, when you add items, that's just, that's just crazy. And there I go. See? See? But sometimes, I like video games. Video games can be great fun, even when they're chaotic. And Pac-Man, I think in a few years, it or at least in the at least in 2019 or 2010, it's gonna turn f no, not 2019, 2020, it's gonna turn 40, and uh, we'll be. I like uh, like I said, I'll be current commemorating that occasion because it's one of the famous video games of all time. You bet I am. Gonna do something, or my name isn't. Billy Mitchell. There we go! Woo! And the doctor survived. He went through medical school, uh, and he's fit enough. He can survive anything. And um, obviously, we have Ho Ho. Oh, goodness. This madness upon us, and everyone survived. See, even the doctor survived. Don't count the doc doctor out. Apparently, he is a miracle worker, contrary to what his colleagues have said. Nope, oh, I'm gonna die. But obviously, I'm playing in time. Time and stock, they're very two different, um, two different things, two different modes in Smash Brothers. And uh, I think most of the competitive guys, they tend to use stock, just because it's just easier to follow, maybe, I don't know. And I'm waiting. And I don't know if it's this stage or a different Mario stage. I think the music gets louder, changes, um, depending if the timer ends. So we'll see. Doesn't sound like it. I was probably false. I was probably gonna shoot this red thing. I was, I was wrong. And obviously we have the. Um, we'll go ahead. <laughs> We'll go ahead and showcase that, but there's Lunk. He won. Filthy Hylian. And uh, we'll go ahead and do one more. Who, who's another fi a good character I like? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe someone that plays incredibly differently in this game? I like Ness. Uh, we'll go ahead. Oh, excuse me. I'm not even facing the mic. Um... We'll go ahead. I like. I remember. I like Donkey Kong and Ganondorf, and uh, we'll go ahead. We'll set him. <sighs> Let me see who pops up. Someone different, please. No. Okay, that works. We'll go ahead and we'll put him on Mario. We'll play as Mario because I like how he plays in this one. And I will go ahead and go back to the infin infinite glacier where we're destined to. Uh, or we're destined to climb until the end of time. But I think Mario's a well-rounded, well-rounded guy, fi fighter. Obviously, you don't want to make your main, your most profitable character uh, too popular, too uh, powerful in your crossover fighting game. PlayStation All Stars with Kratos. And obviously, you have stuff like that. You want to make sure that your characters are balanced, but you're always. You're always gonna get characters that, especially in crossover fighting games or just something like Street Fighter where you just have to deal with like pre-established characters and the aesthetic. You're always gonna get characters that they have the minute details um, that make them better. And uh, yeah. 
Like, the sword characters in Smash Brothers, and especially Smash 4, they're just ridiculous. And I like Mario in this one, he's cool. Uh, I remember seeing um, uh, screenshots of his model and you and the, we were just like blown away. You can see like the rivets in his overall, overalls, like the stitches in his overalls. And we were like, wow, and the little wrinkles in his hat. Uh, it looks a little bit weird, but you know what? It's okay. Mario looks good. And also he has this reflecty attack, his cape from Super Mario World. The greatest, um, the Mar Mario cartoon that had the greatest theme song. <laughs> I think, unironically, I say that. Super Mario. It's a blast from the past. I'll, I'll take a Jamaican guy, Jamaican reggae over a uh, rap. I think that's just my personal preference. I think I discovered right now. <laughs> just like, eh, I like reggae more. And obviously with this uh, stage, and you can see on Ganondorf's cape, that um, certain assets on the characters, like beat hair or capes, uh, they go crazy in the wind. And uh, that's a little feature. We are in the mountains. There's wind in the mountains. Uh, things flap around in the mountains. Uh, and yeah. That's a little touch. I, they removed it just to keep things more uniform in, in, in uh, future games, which is fine. But I was never really a big fan of it, but you know what? It's fine. No, really no big deal. At the very least, I'm glad, like with Smash Brothers Wii U and 3DS, they decided not to keep realism a priority. Because I think in uh, Melee and Brawl, uh, they tried to make uh, things... There's like a... There's like a uh, initiative to keep things uh, like realistic as possible, and I don't think that really necessarily works. I do think you need to have sort of like an art style or some sort of unifying trait in your crossover fighting game to have the characters like look the same but also very but also keep their original looks at the same time like the proportions like Marvel vs. Capcom 3 did this Disney Infinity did this um PlayStation Play, PlayStation All-Stars not really and I won uh whatever Kingdom Hearts uh, it does especially when you look at the um uh organization characters and uh and um, the uh, the um, uh, Disney characters, they look they look the same, but they look like they belong in the same game. So, and we'll go ahead and play as my boy Ness. I like him, he, and he's 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 pretty good in this game. He's pretty cool. He's pretty neato uh, when he works. No, don't throw that, don't throw that at me. Like he's. Kids, super cool. Obviously, a lot of people were exposed to the Earthbound series by his appearance here, and uh, I think he's a pretty cool character. I think Earthbound is all right. <laughs> compare, compare it. I've heard Earthbound like be called an experience, and I can't help but think uh, Detroit uh, barely human or Detroit almost human uh, got a release date uh, for May of this year, uh, and. Um, Hopefully people will enjoy it and people will have a good time with it. Uh, you know, I'll, I haven't mentioned anything about Quantum Dreams games and the three, I think the three that they've already produced. The two with Sony and um, the other ones, uh, the other two, the other one that people might be uh, might know about, Fahrenheit and Indigo Prophecy, that game. I think, um, you know, at the very least, they get to do what they uh, feel is best for their creative project. I appreciate them. Uh, I appreciate that, you know, that Sony is able, Sony is willing to work with this, like, uh, I can't remember, German, Euro, this Euro, Swedish, Nordic, European company, and be like, hey, right, we'll put money into this, you, uh, make the game that you want, and, uh, yeah. Even though David Cage, I don't think he necessarily, he's a bad person, maybe, but, you know, he's, you know, it's his game. People like, pe I heard people like Heavy Rain. People didn't really like Beyond Beyond uh, Two Souls, <laughs> um, but uh, you know uh, that game. This is <laughs> this is the talking about Detroit Beyond Human. I think that it's called. Um, it's about robots. It's about um, the future. It's about um, 
the definition of uh, personhood and a human of what being a human entails and that's what I live for in a science fiction story so yeah uh, I'm I'll keep my eye on it I've been keeping my eye on it <laughs> And I, I should have done this. I know. Well, melee doesn't really have the most uh, music, most amount of music going for it. You can play uh, tracks on this game and I, on this um, in certain stages. And I can't remember if Icicle Mountain had a different track. Uh, if it had, I know some F Zero. I know uh, Vinyl Destination does. I don't know if it plays like the balloon. I don't know if the balloon uh, fight theme is in this game. Like the doot, 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 or it plays something different from a different, um, from a different, um, NES game. I don't know, so. And there we go. We were, we were jumping at supersonic speed, and there we go. Our boy Ness. He won. Ness is the best. And, uh, that's it for that. Let me, let's go ahead and have some fun. Um, let's go ahead what do I want to do? We'll add some characters. No, we already had you, Dr. Mario. Go away. Ness can stay. No. Peach can stay. <laughs> we'll go ahead and we'll do... Um, we'll go ahead. We'll do four. We'll go ahead and showcase that. The two items that I think appeared in a, in a ice climber or some sort of thing... This, the flipper gets tied into, um, sort of like that NES era thing. And they, they were obstacles in Balloon Fight. We'll keep that, uh, Maxim to food, not, ah, uh, not really. I can't, I think the Freezy was from, uh, Super Mario Brothers, but it might be from Ice Climber. We'll go ahead and keep that, so. No, 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 We'll go ahead and keep the Party Ball, and we'll keep the crate. Where is it? Where is it, audience? You tell me. Oh, I guess they appear by themselves, I guess, huh? So, we'll keep... We'll have those two, and we'll have a fun time. So, let's go ahead and, uh... Do the carnage. And, uh, we'll go ahead and select uh, something very plain. Uh, we'll go ahead and just showcase Battlefield. Which is what love is. Oh, and I guess... Yeah, I guess the container items just do appear by themselves. I think in later games... They would have you have the option. I'm di I, I, I'm died. They would give you the option if you want to like a. Uh, if you want to um like have certain ones like the crates or like the rolling crates and and I can't remember if it was Ice Climber or Mario Brothers where that where the that freeze that ice item appears. I can't remember. It's either one. I know that. And obviously, yeah. So. Lots of fun. I'm doing terrible in my own mode that I that I concocted it up. That's awesome. I'm a true trooper. Wee! But uh, yeah, you um, in the original in Balloon Fight, the uh, flipper was sort of like this. It was like this thing where you um, it was an obstacle uh, that would pop your balloons in the stages and in Balloon Trip. But in this game, I keep dying. It's an item. You pick it up. You throw it. It sticks in the air. It becomes a hazard for people, and it's and sometimes you get you get it to do this thing. <laughs> see, see how much fun we're having. I'm having fun. Obviously, you can uh, put it uh, anywhere you want. All right, ice climbers, <laughs> ice climbers, flippers, and freezies. Battlefield. That's how you. That's how we play Smash Brothers in my house. Melee. Pretty dang good game. Very satisfied with it. If I can freaking hit my enemy. If I can oppress my enemy and fight for everlasting peace. Let's freeze someone. There we go. Because I know they allowed you to select a party ball, and at the very least, that has like randomized options where you can get like a certain item, uh, bombs. There's its trophy. Uh, it's trophy states like what you can get with that item, what comes out of that item and what the um, percentages are. 
Um, and also the three, um, the three, um, flippers, so. And obviously, I think with the freeze items, you can, uh, you can, uh, break them. Uh, at least in other games, but also in these games, I, these games, I think, so. That, I think, <laughs> and I should know that because I just played, uh, Ice Climber. Excuse me. I just played Ice Climber, so. I should remember if those freezy things come in, and I think I remember I did in that video, so. Like, I hit I hit the icicle that would kill me, or freeze something. Actually, I want to believe that, because I remember there were, like, icicles that would come in, and they would, like, restore the uh, ice that uh, your player character would chip away. So, there we go. Oh! See, we're having a fun time. I think. And then obviously you can hit them without you uh, walking into the um, flippers. Flipper, 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 they are so flippy. I'm getting sick of that song. I should do a video on Flipper. <laughs> the 1970s, 60s show about a dolphin and how he did things. It was, I think. It's Lassie, but with a dolphin, basically. <laughs> and um, I can't remember for the life of me that I, all I know is that soundtrack, that theme song, sounds like uh, my poor meatball and spaghetti. That song, on top of spaghetti, blah 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 blah, which probably was in contention. And let me win. This is for my dead wife. She gave birth to three of our babies. The fourth one, it was, um, C-section. My culture does... My Eskimo culture does not believe... I can't even finish that. I don't even know. And there we go. I know. I know the ethics about, um... About child rearing in, a uh, Indigenous Alaskan culture. <laughs> I know. 